42 begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalishash, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So repeat it, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. <laughs> the psalm today is on um, page 802 in your prayer book. And we'll read it responsibly. I will exalt you, O God, my King. Which is on 801, sorry. 801, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another. And shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor, splendor of your majesty. And all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts. And I will tell you your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone. And his compassion all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. And speak of your power. That the people may know your power. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words. And merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are out of them. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord. And you give them new season. You open wide your hand. And you satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. And loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. To all who call upon him faithfully.
second reading from to, for today is from uh, Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason I bow down my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly <coughs> far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages! would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments that's left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves 
left by those who had eaten. And they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, his disciples went down to the sea. I skipped a part. <laughs> when Jesus realized that they were again they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. And he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately... The boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious God, open our hearts and our minds to the message that you have for us today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. As with most weeks, today's readings are rich, absolutely rich, with messages that can come forth. I found the first thing that hit me, though, was this prayer in Ephesians. I was also struck by the cheekiness of Jesus in the gospel where he's, he's testing, where are we going to find food for all of these people? Because he already knows where he's going. I was struck by the, the food in our first reading and in our gospel and the abundance and the sharing. I was struck by Jesus walking on the water and the sea and the rock. And yet, still, I kept finding myself led back to this prayer in Ephesians. So we're going to do a little bit of study with our message today, because we often talk about the importance of context with our readings. Knowing the when, the where, the how, the why of scripture doesn't take away from it. It can help us better understand it, as well as how to apply it to our world and our lives today. Paul's epistles, or letters, are often written to specific churches to address specific concerns. They were intended to be read aloud to congregations because at that time, people weren't distributing and reading, but they would be brought by messenger and read aloud to the congregations. And it substituted for Paul's physical presence because he could not be there with them in person. Later distribution of Paul's letters likely included some redaction and editing for publication and distribution, and it sometimes introduced added bias from the editors. We never see that happen. The letter to the Ephesians, however, <clears throat> unlike most of Paul's letters, includes very few references to specific places, people, or situations. It could have been for any group of Gentile Christians not yet familiar with Paul and his teachings. 
the majority of the letter extols the glory of God and reminds hearers to live into the life God called them into as followers of Christ. Now, many scholars believe the letter to Ephesians was not actually written by Paul, but was by, written by one of his disciples to continue sharing the message of Jesus after Paul died. To keep the work going, if you will. The target audience of this letter in Ephesus, if we go with that, even though it could have gone to other places, the target audience was in an area where Christianity was at risk of fracture. The new church was struggling, was faltering, floundering, and this letter came at a time to buoy them and remind them of why they were getting into this thing anyway. The letter to the Ephesians speaks of the cosmic salvation of Christ and God's plan to unify all things in Christ and the countercultural lifestyle we are called into as believers. Now, our reading today is an intercessory prayer for the whole body of Christ. We can hear it and read it and take it in as personal for us, and it definitely works that way as well. But it was originally written to the plural you, to us as the body of Christ. It's a corporate body, the community. The prayer covers four points that our inner being may be strengthened through the power of the Spirit, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith and love, that we may have the power to understand the extent of Christ's love, and that we may know Christ's love and be filled with the fullness of God. In this, there's no separation of faith and love, and God is accessible to all people, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what they've believed before, now, God is accessible to all people, and the relationship of our triune God can be revealed in our body of believers. So what? I love the so what. So what? Why does this matter to us today? If this letter is addressed more generally, unlike some of Paul's letters that we kind of have to parse and remember, okay, well, this was happening in Corinth, and this is why Paul had to say this here, or this is what was going on with the Romans, so Paul had to, like, teach them this here, and we have to filter through that to figure out where it is in our lives today. The letter to the Ephesians being addressed more generally doesn't require quite as much of a filter. Being written to Christians who were at risk of breaking apart, at risk of schism, <laughs> Can understand that. We still see that today, and that's been going on through the history of church. It speaks to our nature of disagreement, our nature of getting to a point of, well, they don't play the hymns I like in church anymore, so I'm going to go somewhere else. Well, somebody sat in my pew, so I'm going to be a little grumpy this morning to be on the lighter side of the disagreements. But as a prayer, as a reminder, these words can breathe life into us as a body and as members of that body. If there's one thing that's true, not just about church, but in general life, we can't do this alone. We as a church, as a body of believers, are the body of Christ. We learn from and are strengthened by each other as well as by those from the past who came before us, who we remember in our memories, in our stories, in our songs, in our prayers. Jesus, whom we follow, is not a concept or a memory, but lives within our hearts, lives within the collective heart of this body. It is our life together, <laughs> which reveals new insight into God and the world in which we live. It is our life together which can reveal the love of Christ 
in the world. That's as true today as it was all those many years back to these floundering, fledgling, new believers in a part of the world not nearly as connected as we were today. They weren't getting on Facebook to post, share this if you agree, Jesus is Lord. They didn't have those means of medium. They had these letters that were carefully penned. Not everyone could even read. So the letters are written and sent out and read. And then from there, others who could go and read went out and read. That's how the message was initially spread and then fostered in these communities. Fostered together as not individual bodies of Christ, but as members of a growing body, seeking to reveal the light and love of God in the world. Very contrary to the individualism which is rampant around the world, but definitely especially in our country today. It's all about me and what I want versus what's good for all of us. Our lives, our lives are interdependent with each other and with the environment around us. As a corporate body of believers and followers of Jesus, we are called into this interdependence to lean into it, to live into it, rooted in love. Rooted in the love of God, the love of Christ, strengthened by the Spirit, so that we can even begin to live this life we're called into. And that life is countercultural, still today. As widespread as Christianity and believing in Jesus and talking about Jesus is today, as compared to the time the letter was originally written, it's still countercultural to live a life that says, I believe in and I follow Christ, and I accept what that means for my life. Think about our baptismal vows, and when we renew those every time, it's an opportunity to step back in, and we give thanks for grace and mercy because none of us is going to get it right um, all of the time, or even really some of the time, but we do our best. And we do our best as members of a body because we can't do it alone. And I know that this is just part of why, especially after the year, year and a half now that we've had, where we've been so isolated and apart, that the sense of urgency to come back together only grows because we know that we are a collective corporate body. And we know we can't do this alone. Of course, it feels urgent. We aren't meant to be apart and isolated. So thank God. Because as a body, we still have to be mindful of the whole, because again, we are not one isolated body, but we are a member of a whole. Thank God we are strengthened by the Spirit. Thank God Christ dwells in us and in us. Thank God that we have this prayer in Ephesians which transcends space and time and still speaks to us and gives us this courage to live today as believers and followers of Christ. So I have a slight paraphrase of the prayer that I'm going to read again here, and I invite you all if you feel comfortable to close your eyes, to do so, and to listen to these words which are spoken both to us as individuals and us as a whole. I bow my knees before God from whom comes everyone in heaven and on earth. I pray that by God's glory you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are rooted and grounded in love. 
I pray that you may have the power to believe and understand with all the saints the magnitude and infinite dimensions, to know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. May this prayer speak to you this day and in the days to come. Please stand as you are able. Let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and the Father. God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten and not made, of the one being with the Father, to whom him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son who was worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets, who is the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, who is the one who organizes and the forgiveness of sins, who lived for the resurrection of the dead, and the Lord of the world to come. Amen. From page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another 
as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died. That your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. This time I welcome you to share any prayers you would like for us to hold as a community. I'd like to pray for Susan Andrews from St. David's Church, who's preparing for surgery and amputation of her foot. Pray for those in a flood condition. Thank you. I'd like to pray for Betty and all those who suffer daily with pain from arthritis or other things that have come over their bodies. I'd like to say a prayer of thanks for my surgery, for all the support I'm getting, and my uneventful recovery. Pray for all who are still feeling isolated. As we pray for the parts of the country that are once again seeing a spike and rise in infections and hospitalizations. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly journey we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in word and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And also with you. Are we supposed to touch each other? <laughs>
Yes. The theory is that you're on the AC. my ongoing gratitude for those of you who have served on the fly both in our online services and as we are making this transition to hybrid um, we are going to return to something of a regular road up very soon where there's actually a schedule and things that are set all things in good time but just a lot of gratitude um, so many of you have stepped up in the moment um, and, and that, I think, perhaps maybe felt extra awkward online when we were just looking at screens. Um, so it's just lots and lots of gratitude. I, I forgot to mention it because it's weird reading from something. I don't usually do that. I did it last week and this week, and it makes me feel out of sorts and forget things. Because the feeding of the 5,000 notice, we're talking about how we're a corporate body, and the feeding of the 5,000, those stories we have don't happen without the disciples. This story of church that we have doesn't happen without the disciples, and we are that body of believers. So this church thing, who we are in the community, it doesn't happen without all of us. So thank you for being a part of it. A uh, few announcements this morning. Um, potluck, it's this coming Saturday. The potluck meal is this coming Saturday, 5 p.m., uh, your vestry will be serving you, so we're going to show up a little early to be all ready. Uh, this is to keep, you know, a minimum of hands from going through the things. Um, you know, we've got a salad and uh, chili on the docket. Bring food. We'll eat it. Um, the craft fair, also coming up in a matter of a couple of weeks. Three weeks? So three weeks from now, August 14th. Uh, whether you want to volunteer or you have a craft you want to contribute to the St. George's Table, get in touch with Sarah. Contact information is on there. If you're on Facebook and you haven't found it, let us know, and we'll get that to you for sure. Also, really, really excited. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Okay. <laughs> August 29th. It's the last Sunday in August. God willing, and the crick don't rise. <laughs> We will return to worship in our sanctuary. We will be back in our pews for the first time since, I think, March like 8th of 2020. So, mark your calendars. And be ready if you, like I said, we're putting together the schedule. If you want to be sure and serve in that service and get on the schedule, let me know. And I'll make sure to work you in some which way. We'll even have some people who want to carry streamers come into the church. It's going to be a big celebration. So mark your calendars, 9 a.m. in the parish hall. So George is left, right? George is gone. Yeah. As far as, far as we know, we've done the work for George to leave. Now, if George stayed yeah. put, we'll deal with that down the road. But as far as we know, the bats are out. Uh, we had the folks come in to do the exclusion. The folks are coming in to do the cleaning in a couple of weeks. Um, and our sexton, Jacob, has been on top of checking the screens to make sure there's no other ways for the bats to come in while we keep our church ventilated. Goodbye, <laughs> George. Uh, and then just to pay attention for details coming soon, we are going to have a fall clothing sale. 
um, as we begin to resume some of the things of the life in the parish. So uh, let's be in touch about that so we can make sure that we do what we need to do to make it happen and serve our community in that way. Do we have any announcements I forgot about or that need to be shared in addition? Oh, sorry. Yes, I do. I've been made aware of various food options in town, and I don't know if people are aware that every Thursday, at least through the summer, there's a food giveaway at St. Hilda's School from 3.30 to 5.30. No questions asked. Um, they put the food in your car, and uh, the line usually starts going out into the street shortly after 3. So, in case any of you guys want to take advantage of that, or you know someone who could use food, you can pick it up for them. As I said, absolutely no questions asked, and they're very generous every Thursday. Where's this again? St. Willard's School. There's no Willard. St. Willard's School. Sorry, who am I saying? St. Willard. Thank you. Sorry. Willard School. George Willard was a nice man, but he wasn't the same. <laughs> <laughs> Willard School. Oh. Thank you, Mickey. Yes, that's um, through the, back plus, the Sanford Backpack Blessings Program. Or Sanford Backpack Program. I don't think they use blessings. Sanford Backpack Program, yes, puts on that. And they do. They have often an abundance of food and you can drive up. They also are always welcoming volunteers. So if you want to give back as, as they give out, that's another way that you can serve in our community. So yes, thank you for that reminder. And we often try to, again? it's four to six. 3.30 no. to 5.30. 3.30 to 5.30. Or until the food runs out. Or until the food runs out. Right, which, um, as far as I know, it never has, but it might, I don't know. Yeah. And they also go to certain um, developments, but I don't, yeah. so like, I don't track that. Yeah, I think it depends. They've got a schedule up. I'll try to find that and get it shared on our Facebook page so that we have that updated information as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave us an offering of himself. <laughs> Prayer A begins on page 361. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth for by water and the holy spirit you have made us a new people in jesus christ our lord to show forth your glory in all the world 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on it in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. come out to you folks and then if you would help with rows for people to come to see you please <laughs>
standing as you are able, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are the spiritual group and the sacrament of body and blood. And as now, tomorrow, peace, grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. For Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God who created you in love and for love be with you now and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen